mold. From the bluey green blooms on that final slice of bread to the black bits slowly advancing across your bathroom ceiling. Does it just look gross or can it actually harm you? Before I dive into that sludge at the back of the fridge, what actually is mold? There are two types, wall and food mold and slime mold. Both feel slimy and need warm, wet, food rich environments to grow. Although that food can be bacteria as well as bits of leftover cake. Wall and food mold is actually a kind of fungus, like mushrooms and yeast, but that doesn't mean you can just happily eat it. Fungi don't have flowers or chlorophyll because they don't make their energy from the sun like plants. Instead, they live on dead or decaying things, something you've got plenty of in the crevices of your home. But there's a creepier tribe, the slime molds. If you film a forest floor in time lapse, you can see it slowly creeping along, feasting on the carpets of rotting leaves and inadvertently suffocating any tiny bugs beneath it. So how does mold grow and spread? Within just three days of a warm wall getting wet, you'll have yourself a spreading alien life form. The fungal mold spores move like a tide, attaching to each other a bit like the water droplets in water, but they can also break free and live independently, infecting and thriving in new areas. Individual slime mold spores can work together too, stacking one on top of the other like building blocks or separating off to colonise new places. They have a really neat way of communicating that allows this to happen. Each mold releases little bubbles of signal to tell any other related mold spores that they're around so that they can, you know, hook up. They can even sense which direction has the best chance of food water and so on. The spores in that direction send out more of a certain signal and the group will redirect to grow that way. What's really fascinating, but kind of creepy and horrific, is that these organisms only release their toxic substances when they know that there are enough of them around to get a good result. So should we chuck away that mouldy bread and freak out about the gunge in the bottom of the bin? Well, your regular fridge mould is pretty harmless. But you shouldn't go actively eating it because it can still irritate your insides. But hey, lemon mould is actually a source for the antibacterial medicine penicillin, so who knows what's lurking back there? What about wall mould? Most of it is not actually toxic, although it can aggravate illnesses like asthma and hay fever if you breathe in the spores. To be honest, the most worrying bit is that if you do breathe it in, your lungs are lovely and moist and warm, so your real challenge will be stopping the mould growing inside you. There is one of these wall moulds that you should stay clear of though, the black stachybotrys. If you inhale its byproducts, you could be looking at oral lesions, swelling of the lips and lymph nodes, elevated body temperature, weak pulse, and if you don't stop it, death. The mould most likely to contain dangerous toxins develops on nuts, especially ones kept in a humid environment. In fact, that mould may produce a toxin which is one of the most deadly known to man. Or what would happen if something like a slime mould takes hold inside you? Well, nice knowing you. The problem is that many medicines don't work well on microorganisms that form slime. However, there is a new branch of medicine being developed that could combat these alien-like invasions by actually breaking up the socialising between the microbes trying to attack you, cutting their communication lines so they can be present but do no harm. So there you have it. It might just look like a dirty smudge on the wall or an 80s style game show gunge, but there's a whole world in there. If you're not into spiders, lice and bacteria, this one isn't for you, I'm afraid. Well, actually, this one is for you because in a rather gross way, you are practically a walking Petri dish.